Hey Mike. Good evening. Hey guys, good evening. Hey, Silburn here. I uh, want to wish you a wonderful evening. Uh, awesome, awesome. It's a great day, lovely day. I think every day is a lovely day, actually. I think that's what I should say. Every day is a lovely day. And, uh, and because every day is a lovely day, we just take control of the day. Um, you've seen my topic tonight. But before I go into my topic, I um, always like to catch up on some of the things which I think is also crucial as well. Let me just check this here. In Jamaica, there is this uh, new thing which is happening about this ID card. And there's this ID thing which is happening in Jamaica, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, lots of people are talking about it. Uh, there are many terminologies about it. Keep Garvey, I mean, you know about this ID thing. I want to do a live on that issue uh, sometime very soon. Uh, Jamaicans are getting a bit very uh, concerned about this new ID system. And uh, they're thinking like it's uh, uh, th there's a trust factor there. I have not been able to actually delve into it properly really as yet and uh, the opposition uh, party is against it uh, many people are concerned again about it uh, I do not know the full details about it but what I'm getting at is many people are not happy about it so I think what I'm gonna do at some point is to have a, a live with opposing voices in regards to this ID Thing which is happening in Jamaica there I do not know much about it honestly speaking um, but that is something but today I want to talk about Mugabe I want to talk about Mugabe today ladies and gentlemen Mugabe Robert Mugabe and as you can see the how I how I coined uh, my, my, my topic today my phrase today is and as you can see, uh, what, what did I say? Is Mugabe the last relic of African leadership? Okay. Is Mugabe the last relic of African leadership? And and I said that because, you know, when we think about all the different um, leaders or so which, which have uh, come through, it's like Mugabe is that last one and a few people have said that so um, so so tonight I want to try to get um, someone from Zimbabwe to actually shed a light as to the whole thing in regards to this and uh, and you know you know what, what, I, what one of the things which I find very interesting and uh, and I don't know what you think but I was watching the news and when, when everything unfolded and I was watching how the Western media tend to be very uh, quiet. Not that they're not saying anything, but very quiet and just watching how things unfold. And it's interesting because many people see Mugabe as the fiery brand leader. And at the same time, many also say that he has, he has reached to a point whereby he is uh, defunct. Or when I say defunct, I mean to say that it reaches to a point whereby they call diminishing return, whereby one needs to step down. There's also the saying about when do leaders step down? Uh, when do leaders have reached past their sell-by date? Uh, the, 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 the military move to seize power. Uh, the military actually saying it's not a coup. Uh, someone said it smells like a coup. It looks like a coup. It reads like a coup. It's like it smells a rat. So is it a coup? 
um, you know, elements of it look like a coup, but they're saying it's not a coup. But the president is under, uh, uh, what should I say, um, house arrest, his family, his wife. They say that she's a power broker, you know. And so that's interesting. So I've got a, a, a good person, which I, I, I put up a feeler out today to see if I can get someone who can come on and actually from the heart of Zimbabwe um, to really talk about it. I'm Jamaican, you know. We only about Zimbabwe. We heard about sometime you can make, um, if you've got some Zimbabwean dollars, you can be a millionaire. But I've got Tinashe Mindo, an undergraduate in international studies, strong interest in African history and current affairs, who is going to come on and actually um, share his views in regard in, 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 in Zimbabwe as well. Um, so at some point, he's going to come on, hopefully. Well, definitely. Well, he better. <laughs> you know? And it would be good as well to to hear your views as well. I I, I want I want I want to hear your your views in regards to the whole thing. And so while 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 I'm waiting for um uh, Tinashe uh, say hello. And also I've got Munia Isuana. Uh, Munia, if uh, you're from Zimbabwe as well, um, if you want to come on at some point, it'd be great for you to come on as well. But I'm waiting for Tinashe now. You know he's saying he's a good man and has been given a bad name just because he stood up against those whites who stole land in the then Rhodesia. But he was right in telling them. So, ah, fantastic. Tinashe. Hello. How are hello, you? Hello. How are you? I'm good, thank you, sir. How are you? I'm fantastic. Uh, it, it's great. We, we just met um, online just about 30 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it feels like we're kindred brothers. <laughs> you see, ladies and gentlemen, I, I have a researcher. Uh, she's from Catherine. She's from Africa. Zimb Zimbabwe, Catherine is from, is it? It's Catherine. Or South Africa. South Africa. South Africa, yeah. And, and Catherine does all my research and everything. Like, all the questions that I ask on my show, Catherine does it. And uh, sometimes people might think that I'm that brilliant, but it's not me, actually. I've got people that work with me. <laughs> but, but, and uh, so, so I said to Catherine, I need someone tonight. I, I just need to go live because BBC is talking about it. CNN is talking about it. So why should I wait till tomorrow to talk about it? Let me do it tonight on my Facebook Live to talk about uh Zimbabwe. And Tinashe, I, I thank you for coming on tonight. And uh, what's happening in Zimbabwe? <laughs> well, um, firstly, thanks for having me. Um, I think like you said at the beginning, if you know, if it looks like a coup and it walks like a coup, then it's definitely a coup d'etat. Um, and I think that's what we've seen. But uh, it's a change of, of power, really. It's a change of power within different factions of ZANU-PF. Um, so what's happened is you've had two factions of ZANU-PF. You've had what are popularly known as the Team Lacoste, and yes. then you've had the Team G40. Um, so what's yes. happened is a transfer of power from them um, to, into one particular faction, really. Okay, okay. That's, that's interesting. So you're saying that team. Is that ZANU is part of a team or so? What, what? Yeah, there's been, there's uh, over the last, I'll say, four, three to five years, there's been a strong struggle within ZANU-PF itself to try and see if they could find a successor um, to, to our aging president, or should I say former president. Um, it, and hang on a there's been two hang factions. On, hang on a second. You said former president. I, I pick it up. I, I take it that you believe that's the end of Mugabe, while they say he's still a president. Yeah, I think I think we we we'll, we'll soon see the end. Um, I mean, it's 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 a it's a few hours in. It's I mean, it's almost a day into now the actions that the military started. Um, what we'll see happen over the next week will obviously determine what happens. Um, but as it is at the moment, he still is the president. But we'll see what happens. Whether they're going to wait for the general elections, which are scheduled for next year, we're not sure yet. They haven't said anything or whether we'll see something happen sooner. But the thing is, the military has said that there will be elections soon. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens over the next few days. Yeah. So, so tell us about the, the military now. What, 
What, what's, mm -hmm. I, I thought the military would have been subject to the president to a certain extent, uh, you know. Um, what, and, and, I, and I saw earlier there were police which were being held by the military or what. Yeah. Um, is the military yeah. have that sort of independence from the government? It doesn't have an independence from the government. Um, the President Mugabe is the chief in command of the military. Um, which is why I think you've seen they went through great lengths in their speech yesterday to try and emphasize um, that he was still their commander in chief. Um, even when they gave um, their speech today, where, when they took over the, the, uh, uh, the TV station, they did mention that, you know, he is safe. He is still their commander in chief. They're not after him. They're after the people who've been robbing the country, after the criminals around him. Um, and the criminals around him are namely, you know, certain political figures. Um, some will suspect and some will suggest that one of those figures um, is his wife, um, Grace Bugabe, and her particular faction within ZANU-PF. So they've shown him a, lot of, a great deal of respect because normally when you see things like this happen in Africa, the president will be, you know, escorted or he would have fled the country or he would have been killed. So the fact that they keep reiterating that he's alive and he's safe means that they don't necessarily want to bring harm to him, but just want to see a particular change within the country, I reckon. Um, so in order, so what's the sort of alternative that we're looking at in Zimbabwe, if anything, uh, in regards to government or, or person? Is it the vice president? Is, is that new that gentleman which I've been talking about? Is there potential? Yeah, the former vice president, Mr. Mnangagwa. Um, so he was the vice president until last week um, when he got um, demoted from his, uh, from his position and expelled from the, uh, from the party as well. The reason they gave at that time um, was that he was being disloyal um, and certain criminal activities, etc. cetera. Um, and that's not something that went down very well with the army because um, they've obviously got very close ties with Mnangagwa, um, and with the, the general as well. Um, what's interesting is that Mangagwa has always been the right-hand man for Mugabe, so it was quite interesting to see him get fired from his position like that as well. Um, so most likely you're going to see a transition which um, goes into that direction, um, and maybe a lot of people have been saying that he is a successor to Mugabe, so we'll probably see that happen sooner rather than later. Right. But, uh, okay, Tinashe, um you know, we met today, and uh, uh, recently yeah. we just wrote of Black History Month, yeah? <clears throat> and in Black yeah. History Month, we talk about African history. But most time, uh, yeah. Black History Month sort of focus a lot on transatlantic slavery and from the Caribbean, the Windrush yeah. factor. But I've been pushing a sort of line to say that Black history should not be starting from slavery, <clears throat> but starting from before and before and before, Right. And I said, yes. we should talk about African history or black history once a week instead of a month of a year. So can you take <laughs> us back? Can you take us back to who is Mugabe and what does Mugabe mean to uh, Zimbabweans at the start to now? Because earlier tonight, I was playing, uh, I can't play it because it, I, I posted up uh, a video when Bob Marley yeah. was there in yeah. Zimbabwe. At the um, yeah. at the independence, yeah, in 1979, yeah, yeah, in 1979, and I think yeah. So tell us about Mugabe and that historical factor with Mugabe. What he's about? What I is think if well, if if we go back that far, he's someone who is a who is a figure who was well respected. Um, he's someone who at that moment he sacrificed his life. Um, you know, he, he put himself into a position whereby he saw that there was change which was needed in the country. Yes. Um, and he managed to bring about that change. He brought about our independence. Um, there were, you know, and it's interesting enough, it was actually the, the army which made him the leader of the party as well. Um, yes. And in his early years, um, when he, you know, when he got into power and he was president, um, there was a lot of... Um, development in Zimbabwe. There's a lot of great things that he did for the country. But then slowly but surely, um, things started to change. Um, you know, I think the earliest signs of indication were when there is um, 
you know, when he victimized and made an attack um, on the minority tribe Benderele's. Um, mm. So that's when things started to change in Zimbabwe and things started to take a, a different direction. And since then, really, he's been trying to battle the, the fire that he's that he sparked, really. He's been trying to put out the fire that he sparked. Um, and it's such a shame to see him come to this extent because he is a great man. Uh, he's a great man. He did lead us to independence. Um, he's fought for the country. And so have all those other several um, senior members in the party. Um, yeah. We can't take away the history and what they brought to the country and how they gave us our independence. I mean, I was born after independence. Um, so th that, that's all I've ever known. All I've ever known is how great Mugabe is and how great the party was and what, the, what those freedom fighters did for us. Because the men that you look at, the men and the women that you look at who are at the top of the country now were actually in the war with their guns uh, fighting against the colonialists. So it's something which is quite fresh in our history. There's always this thing, um, Tinashe, about <clears throat> leaders not knowing when to step down or passing the baton. Yeah. There was Morgan, what was his name? Morgan Tsisipar? Morgan, Morgan Changirai. Yes. Morgan where is Changirai. He now? Yeah, yeah, where is he in the scheme of things now? <laughs> um, we haven't, we, well, earlier on today, all we know was that he was going to give a press conference. Um, and he's just said, I'll give a press conference within the next 24 hours. Um, when he came up onto the political scene, he came on as a trade unionist. Um, so yes. he was fighting for workers' rights um, and that sort of thing. And eventually he set up his own political party. Um, eventually, you know, they had runoff elections, which many people will say he won. Some people will say he didn't, but it was very close. They had a unity government, um, which lasted for a certain period of time. They rewrote the constitution. But since then, um, you know, some people would say that he has been, you know, um, for lack of a better term, at, in bed and at the table with ZANU PF. Um, yes. And there was a, there's now been a different faction of his own political party as well. So there's people who are now opposed to him, and they've started their own. I think it's called MDCM. Um, so you've got MDCT and MDCM. So his own political party is split into two as well. Um, so there's a lot of uh, political uncertainty in Zimbabwe. Um, you know, but the fact is, um, ZANU PF is still the, the largest party. It's the party that we've all known. Um, and it's the same thing in South Africa, that you've got the uh, ANC, who are the strongest party there and the largest yeah. party there, yeah. despite all the other small political parties that might be there, but they're still the ones in charge. But if we, if we make a comparison with South Africa and Zimbabwe, we can see where Mandela had a transition process where he stepped back <clears throat> and then um, yeah. the president, president came in as well. He passed it on um, to before, Tabo Beke. Yep. Beke. And then, so you can see that process then. Do you believe that one of the failings of Zimbabwe and leaders sometimes is whereby they do not know when to pass the baton on? Definitely, definitely. And that's been, that, this is what has led to the situation that we've witnessed over the last, um, I'll say the last 24 hours, but really it's been yeah. happening for the last three, five years, or even the last 20 years, if I should say, um, because there were many times when President Mugabe could have stepped down but I think it's the issue about legacy. I think he wanted to have a legacy which he wanted to be able to carry on after he was gone. Um, there, were, there was unfinished business. He, I think he felt he needed to, to have finished. And that's, that's why he kept going. Because before, for example, we had the land acquisition, there were times for him to be able yeah. to, to give up power. He didn't. Um, when he put in the land acquisition bill, he could have stepped away and said, right, we're taking back the land for the people um, walking away from this. But he felt like he needed to have everything arranged and sorted. Um, yes. So maybe he decided to stay into power a bit longer. And since then, things have just unraveled and unraveled. And it's just been, un it's just been his, his own undoing, really. It's a mess that and he's then, created, a fire that he's created. And then he wanted his wife, according to sources, to take over, could carry that dynasty on. If anything, yeah, well, that's what his wife says. That's what his wife says. His, uh, um, we call her Gucci Grace. If you didn't know, we call her Gucci Grace. Uh, <laughs> what does that mean? Um, Gucci Grace is, um, Gucci Grace because of her luxurious shopping sprees, and apparently, she's a big fan of the name brand Gucci. So, 
she's the one who's been telling people that, well, you know, he's, he's training me and he's uh, preparing me to become president. Whether he's actually said these things, I don't think I've heard him say that in public, that he's preparing her to be, to be the next president. But that's what she's been saying. Gucci Grace. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, for those who are coming on, I'm talking about Mugabe. And my topic is Mugabe, the last relic of African leadership. Mm. And I've got Mr. Tinashe um, Menga. Tinashe, uh, I got your name wrong there. <laughs> Uh, no, Tinashe right. <laughs> Minda, yeah, is an undergraduate right. international yeah, student, yeah. Zimbabwean. Uh, we just, I, I want to take it from his perspective about Zimbabwe. But look at some of the comments or as people are saying here. Um, Mugabe worked with the British Parliament, isn't it? And it was once an ally of the UK. Sounds a bit familiar with other persons. I mean, you got Saddam, yeah. you got, you got um, Gaddafi. If you see a little trend there, yeah. ISA, IS, ISIS, also all the things, was... The, the 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 West use these persons, you know. Keep going on. People yeah. saying factionalism within the two main parties shows some progress politically as views and opinions uh, begin to create a larger political spectrum. Bianca said, yeah. the last opposition experienced much hardship trying to share power. His wife was also mysteriously killed in a car crash. That's a previous wife, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. trying to get his wife, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mugabe reminds me of Macbeth. Someone said Shakespeare. Um, yeah. Someone said, yeah. he's, a he's a dictator, isn't it? He was actually yeah. knighted. Let, let's go back to this thing now. <clears throat> I touched a bit on Gaddafi. I touched a bit on mm. Saddam. I touched a bit on uh, even Syria now. And you, there's, a, there's a falling out with the West. Mm. And what we're mm. seeing as well, there was a falling out with Mugabe. Because Mugabe always said this, tell Mr. Blair... Mr. Blair to uh, <laughs> with Mr. Blair or stuff like that. To, you know? keep his, to keep his UK, I'll keep my Zimbabwe. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And, and, and therefore, people actually love that standing up to the West with, with Mugabe. Yeah. And, and what we're seeing now is, could it be that there is this hand which has held Mugabe, sorry, held Zimbabwe together with that taken out of the mm. frame with the the, the army, we might see this splintering, like what we're seeing, uh, going through areas where the leaders, the strong leaders, have been removed. Yeah, definitely, definitely, and and that's the thing, though. It's um, you know because with um, with Mugabe, he cut his ties with the UK several years ago, yeah, um, with the UK government and with the Western governments. Um, I think it was more Changirai who, uh, who had a lot more support from the Western governments, which is one of the reasons why he never really managed to get a grip and, um, on power and his opposition never really got a grip because there were still a large majority of people who still supported ZANU-PF. Um, and there still mm. are a large majority of people who, do, who still support ZANU-PF today. Mm. Um, but it's going to be interesting what we're going to see, really, because at the moment, it's, it's anyone's guess how it's going to go. And, and what they say, the relationship with Zimbabwe has always been complex, um, yeah. and, 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 he, and he loves going to the Savile Row royal family. I mean, this guy's been there, really. Yeah, 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 he has, yeah. And that's what, uh, that's what we call a Gucci Grace, you know, because they used to come to, to London, to Selfridges, to Harrods, and, you know, shop their, shop their, <laughs> shop their days away. Um, and what's interesting enough as well is I think um, the younger generation in particular, um, and I think this is something that they were able to show in um, the, the media that they have in terms of using um, WhatsApp and Twitter and so forth. Sorry, they were sorry. able to show because... I'm going to stop you there. I'm going to stop you there. Every time we say Gucci Grace, I think it's Bianca Grant. She keeps putting up these smiley face, these laughing when it's Gucci Grace. <laughs> Sorry. Carry, carry yeah, that's, that, that's the real, that was the reality of the situation. Um, yeah, and talking about this, um, you know, another thing which fueled this as well, particularly for the younger people who are struggling to, to find employment, to find jobs, um, was you had the two, you, you, you've got the two Mugabe boys um, on their Snapchats, on their Instagrams. Um, I think there was the most, the most recent post I saw last week was of um, one of the Mugabe boys with a watch. Um, covered in diamonds and 
Yeah, and he was talking about, yeah, you can have a 60K watch um, when your daddy runs the country. You know, things like that. You know, and if you think, um, you know, for, for, we were, for people born after independence, we're failing to get jobs and hear these kids. I think the other boy bought a Bentley last week as well. You know, and hear these kids buying Bentleys, doing all these fantastic things. And, and we're struggling. You know, people were struggling to get jobs. Um, they're struggling to start their businesses. They just want to have a life and enjoy as well. So all these things have just added on to the fuel um, of, of the down, um, the demise of the, the dynasty that was coming, as it were. So, so, so do you think the army um, is working by itself or there are influences, uh, could be external or could be internal influences uh, to the army? It's, yeah, I think it will be more internal influences. Um, I find it, some people might suggest that the external influences, um, and they'll particularly be looking at Western governments and so forth, but I highly doubt Western governments um, or any Western organizations would have had influence, which is why I think they were caught off guard as well, because if you notice, the Western media was very slow to report this, so they were caught off guard. Um, if there's any external influences, maybe they might be coming from China, but then Gucci Grace has got strong ties with China. They've got properties and houses there. So it seems more it's internal influences. Um, and by internal influences, there seems to be, an, uh, from what I understand, um, when the vice president was taken from his position last week, um, the, army, the army general called a meeting with all the other party members who'd been disbanded from Zano PF before, and they kind of felt that, you know, this is the end. You know, he's taken out one of the last people, um, one of the last freedom fighters who stood for what the party stood for. Um, and they, you know, they've taken him from his position and we can't have this anymore. Because there have been many people that have been dismissed from the party. Um, some people have been killed as well. So I think for the army, it was the last straw for them. Now, a point I just want to ask you now is this. Um... What is, or how are people in Zimbabwe, um, how are they? I mean, how, I mean, how are they um, managing, you know, regarding the, 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 the dollar and all those sort of things? What, what is it like for them, um, for them directly, <laughs> the people in Zimbabwe? Um, Zimbabwe is a very, it's a very interesting country because it's got very, resilient people. So we're very resilient. Um, like, you know, this morning, um, speaking to some of my family and some of my friends, it was business as normal. You know, I spoke to one of my cousins earlier. She was taking her children to school. You know, another friend of mine was telling me how she just got through office and her work. Um, so they just carried on business as normal, despite how hard it is to be able to, um, you know, start your own business or to be able to you're not sure when you're going to get paid at the end of the month. Um, really? Are you going to get paid in US dollars? Are you going to get paid in a currency? That's not even a currency. Um, but somehow they just managed to survive and just managed to keep going and keep thriving, still put food on the table um, and still, still try and live a normal life. So they're very resilient people. We are very resilient. And I think the fact that it's taken us this long to have the military intervene um, compared to many other African countries, um, shows how resilient and how much people could take. Um, so for it to have taken this long, um, people have tried their best to, you know, go to the ballot box and vote. Mm -hmm. People have tried their best to demonstrate and to show their unhappiness. Um, okay. But, you know, finally, the army decided to intervene. Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, while you're here, um, thank you for coming on um, in Instagram as well. Um, I would love if you just press share and share this video as well, because I want to delve in a bit more. Uh, somebody said, who is going to replace Mugabe? Not that you are, I'm not saying you are, you, are, you are a prophet or something like that. <laughs> yeah, from what we can see, it seems like it's going to be the, the vice president, who, um, Mr. Nanga, you know, the former vice president, Mr. Nangagwa. He seems the most likely one. Um, several years ago, his name was thrown into the bag as well. Um, there were other people, a former vice president, Joyce Mujuru. She was once touted that she could possibly be the first female president of the country. So there are a few people who could take that role. But because of when the army has intervened, 
they've intervened at Nangagwa's dismissal. So it seems most likely um, that maybe that's their political tie. Um, you know, so we'll have to see what happens when the elections are going to be called. We're scheduled to have elections next year. So we'll see when the elections come around, you know, who's going to be running for Zanopia um, and who are people going to vote for. So it seems then that how the, the real power shift is changing Zimbabwe is by the power broker, which is the army. Even though yeah, you have the election. It looks like it. It looks like it. Yeah, because that is yeah. what took place in 19... Uh, what, when was it? When you had independence, 1970? Or, or, or before that? Well, it was signed in 1979, yeah. Yeah, and, and Mugabe was the one who was installed by the army. Yeah, what they did was when they were out um, during the 70s, in the, uh, in the 70s, in the 60s and 70s, yeah. um, Mugabe was a teacher in Ghana. He was yeah. teaching in Ghana at the time. So um, he was around the Kwame Nkrumahs and so forth. Um, so what the military needed, um, they, they needed, well, they, they, were, they were the resistance then. What they needed was someone who was quite political, um, someone who could... Um, really be a voice for the people. And that's how he came about to be the voice uh, for, the, for, the, for the army at that point in time. And he started to lead them. And then a political party was created behind him. Um, and, and eventually, that's how he got to become president. Right, right. There, there is a bishop, um, Archbishop St. Tamir. I think it's St. Tamir in the UK. He, he cut off yeah. his, uh, his ribbon around his neck. Yeah. <laughs> remember him? Yeah. And he said... He yeah, from, I think he's from Uganda. Yes. He will not wear the ribbon for his um, cleric, whatever, yeah. until Mugabe goes. Yeah. And he has yeah. never worn that since. Which is a very... He's never won it. We'll see what happens tomorrow. I wonder if there's anyone <laughs> looking out for him. You might. We'll see what happens tomorrow over the next few days. But that was a very strong statement, um, especially considering, um, you know, the, from him, I think he's, he's from Uganda originally. So considering the history that Uganda went through with Idi Amin and so forth, those are very strong statements coming from, from the archbishop. Um, he obviously felt strongly about that. Um, and, you know, there have been many, many, um, you know, notable figures who have denounced what Mugabe is doing. Um, but, you know, it, it never faced him because he always felt he was doing the right thing. Can I just ask this question? Um, what was Mugabe doing? What was he really doing? Because did he really go that far? What was he really doing? I know he was trying to bring back the land in back into yeah. Africa, into the ownership of black Africans. Because let's let's make it a straight yeah. straight. South Africa, right? You had the wealth of South Africa in the hands of white. Right? It was turning to a yeah. point where Zimbabwe, the wealth was in the hands of white. And one look at that in a sense whereby Africa, the motherland, where I'm from, my lineage, it seemed like we are being cheated out on. You hear the word? Cheated yeah. out on. And then the Chinese yeah. now are having their hands and their eyes upon Africa, Zimbabwe, and, and even yeah. in Jamaica as well, to a certain extent, where people have this conception, whether it's preconceived or not, that we are again going to be cheated out on. So therefore, yeah. could it yeah. be then that Mugabe will be actually um, vindica vindicated many years from now, whereby what he was trying to do was to balance the books and set by cheating back, cheating back. How can you cheat what was yours, really? Think about that for a second. I'm sorry, I just yeah. dropped that in there. Yeah, that's, that's, a very, that's very interesting. And I think that's, that's one of the challenges that a lot of pan-Africanists like yourself and myself and everybody else is listening those are one of the challenges that we have because when the land reform came, everyone was like, oh, okay, that sounds like a good thing. But then what happened? It got divvied out to, you know, his close-knit friends. It got divvied out to nepotism, and nothing never really transpired for the people after that. There was some land which was taken over by the people, 
but we were never able to produce enough as we were able to produce before. Right. And then now going forward with China coming onto the scene as well, you know, we look at that and we realize that's another form of colonialism. That's neocolonialism because the deals that the Chinese give are not really for the people. They really just benefit the Chinese. And then you think at how Africa we've got all this wealth, we really could be in a position whereby we could produce for ourselves, you know, contract these things to ourselves within African government. You know, like, and it's just one simple thing. Like, I remember when we had a fuel shortage in Zimbabwe back around uh, 2008 and so forth. I just never really could get my head around, we have a fuel shortage. Nigeria is the largest oil producing country. Why isn't Nigeria giving us oil? Or why can't we just buy oil direct from Nigeria? Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a food shortage. Why can't we source that food from Kenya? Why do we have to buy rice which is coming from, uh, you know, from Asia or from South America? You know, um, we need uh, materials. Why can't we source these materials from within Africa itself? Why can't we source them from, you know, from the Caribbean or from the other South, South American countries? Why does it have to come from Asia or from North America? So that's the thing that gets a lot of Pan-Africanists um, you know, disappointed that all these leaders come and they promise us all these things. But really, it goes back to business as normal. You know, nothing seems to change. It's just a new form of colonialism that seems to be right. so, 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 so what I'm seeing then is that uh, there need to be very strong and balanced and fair leadership and good managers mm. in Africa. Right. right? The, the motherland. Because, yeah. you know, Tanisha, we, we talk about this every day. We talk about the whole, the Black Pound. We talk about um, Black Wall Street. We talk about the wealth of Africa. We talk about Timbuktu. Um, but when we ask, when our children dare to ask us then, uh, Daddy, if you're saying that there's so much that we did from Africa, where is it? Where is it, um, where is it shown, Tanisha? So, so therefore, yeah. listen, I'm a Brexiter, yeah, in the sense of Brexit, right? And and whether it was Brexit or not, I'd be a Remainer. And I tell you why. Whether yeah. whether when, when it was Remain, I'll be cool. Whether it is Brexit, I'll be cool. The point I'm trying to say, whenever there are changes and there are new uncharted waters, uncharted territories, then what happened is that there are uncharted opportunities, right? So in a way... exactly. In a way, I'm sort of, um, one of the reasons why I wanted you to come on on somebody, because I see it as an awakening, in a sense. I see it whereby, yeah. whenever this fundamental change take place, I would just hope that Mugabe, uh, it would be a way where Mugabe can go and rest in peace and write his memoirs and really teach other persons about that aspect of Africa now, because he's one of the last relics of the freedom fighters. Yeah. The one that sort of holds yeah. that emblem in his hands now, to a certain extent. So, yeah, so therefore, my per, so my perspective, so my perspective is that they need this way whereby we can actually strengthen the motherland, uh, Tanashi. Mm. It's all of us' responsibility. Yeah. Yeah, it is, definitely. And that's why you see, um, I know in, in South Africa, I don't know if you're aware of Julius Malema, yes. um, the South African opposition there. Um, he's been very vocal about what's been happening in Zimbabwe. Um, and some of his comments have ranged from, like, look, listen, um, there's a lot of neocolonialist neo um, activity that's happened in Zimbabwe. But at the same time, we have to hold the leaders of the country responsible. But we hope that going forward, any of the political leaders that we have going forward, whether it's in Zimbabwe, whether it's in South Africa, whether it's in Lagos, whether it's in Kenya, wherever it is, let's hope that these are people, at least they've got a vision for what it is they see Africa as. You know, because some of these people are well-traveled individuals. They're well-learned individuals. You know, you just hope that can't they take, you know, lessons from, from Dubai, from the Arab countries? Mm -hmm. You know, look how they've managed to grow within the last 30 years or so. You know, can't we do that for ourselves and replicate that for ourselves? Yes. You know, um, why are they spending all this money in, in you know, why are they in Golan spending all this money in Spain and Portugal? Um, 
but they're not building Angola up to a state whereby Africans are investing in Africa itself. You know, so I think what we need is not really a, a revolution in Zimbabwe or across Africa. I think we need more of an evolution in terms of our thinking, especially our political mm -hmm. leaders, an evolution in realizing that politics is not a game for uh, an individual and his, um, his group of people that he's close with, but it's something to benefit the whole people. Because I'll be honest with you, in as much as we look at the UK system and the American system, there is corruption. Because at the end of the day, you know, who gets the big contract? You know, in, in, in the UK, it's all these Eton boys. They give each other the big contract. All these boys know each other from when they went back to school. They're all boys club. So they yeah. give each other contracts, but there's never a day whereby you won't have any running water in the UK. Oh. There's never a day whereby you won't, be, you won't have electricity here. Because at least they still realize that there's a majority of people out there who want to just have a normal life. Yes. And, 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 and that's important. And that's why somebody flagged up about um, evolution over revolution as something which is um, yeah. uh, very crucial by William Mindo. Uh, evolution over revolution. Um, Catherine has just joined in a while ago as well. Now, now a couple of persons are saying, um, somebody said a while ago, why should the wealth be given to whites who own the industries? There is no empathy in business. It's capitalism. So someone earns more. Yeah. That is the principle. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mugabe needs to step down. Well, somebody said that. I said, well, he has no choice. <laughs> because <laughs> I, I, I'm just reading, I'm just looking at some articles here and uh, this bit here from BBC, which says, uh, and this is what we said earlier. It said, Zimbabwe's military says actions do not amount to a takeover. It still refers to Robert, Robert Mugabe as the commander in chief of the country's defense yeah. forces. Well, practically speaking, Mr. Mugabe is not in charge if his forces can step in to usurp his authority. This is not a coup d'etat yeah. in name, but it appears to be in action. So, what we can say is that we mm. smell a rat and it's a rat. <laughs> exactly, definitely. And um, this is the thing because even um, well, yesterday when the, the youth at the, the the lead of the Zano PF youth. He gave a speech yesterday um, afternoon denouncing the military, telling them to divorce themselves from political affairs and so forth. And yeah. today we're reading reports that he'd been arrested. Um, and I think it was about maybe an hour or two ago. You know, he's given another speech and he said, look, um, you know, I'm the youth leader. I'm a very young guy. I said some things yesterday which I shouldn't have said. And I'm very sorry for saying those things. We're going to work with the army and so forth. And this is the youth. This is the youth who have been always supporting Mugabe. You know, and, in, and as much as you will say that no one's coerced me into saying this, I think we all know he's been coerced um, into, into saying these words. And it's that, and that's when we realize that, that the power has been lost. Mugabe, the Mugabe family and um, their close-knit group of cronies have lost that power because many, the former minister of finance has been arrested. I saw pictures of his house with the bullets today. You know, many former ministers have been arrested. So they, there has been a big power shift and whatever power base they have, um, it, it's gone. It, it's gone, really. Do, do you think now, just like the young leader sort of changes tune, is that he's aligning himself in a strategic move for power? Um, to be honest with you, um, to be honest, firstly, when I remember when I first saw his video yesterday, um, you know, he was looking head down and he was just reading from a piece of paper. He didn't look like he was someone who was very confident in what he was saying. He looked like someone had told him, here's a piece of paper, say these things to the public. So that's firstly. So maybe he was coerced into saying the speech yesterday. But then again, it's at times like these people will start to maneuver themselves. Um, there's a very prominent businessman in Zimbabwe called Philip Chiangwa. Um, yes. I'll just, it's, this is just an example. Um, so last week he was at a rally with uh, the first lady, um, you know, and today he's come out and he said, I'm not part of that faction. I've never supported them. 
but there's pictures of him last week at the rally with her. You know, so people obviously changed their tune when they realized that, you know, the, the power, sh- the, 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 there's a now power shift. You know, well, um, yeah. whether people have just been paying lip service all along and they really never liked what was going on and they just never had the, the courage to say these things, yes. who knows? But definitely people are changing their mind and they are jumping ship. <laughs> and, 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 and it could be a situation whereby the army said that they are looking for all the criminals around Mugabe, if anything. So they are maybe worried that by aligning themselves to Mugabe, they are like a Titanic going down. All being well, yeah, yeah. So yeah. tell me now. But I think the thing is, when when the army, uh, on, I think when on. the army went in yesterday. Sorry, sorry. I think when the army went in yesterday, um, they did it in a very calculated way. Um, first of all, they went in the night, and I think that's to show the respect they have for the uh, for the civilian, to show that they didn't want to bring any harm to the civilians, and they targeted. They knew the people who they were after. And all those people have been taken. You know, there's prominent politicians who are active on Twitter, like Donald Trump is, um, for example, Jonathan Moore is always very active on Twitter. You know, yeah. since about 8 p.m. yesterday, he hasn't sent out any tweets. So, you know, and there's many of them like that, you know, so they're very, they're very targeted in who they were looking for. Yeah. So tell us now. And, and um, the criminals that were, that were talking, yeah. yeah. What is your dream for Mugabe? I'm um, sorry, what's your dream for, for Zimbabwe? Zimbabwe? My dream for Zimbabwe is, is it's a very simple dream. It's a very, very simple dream. I just want my people to be, I just want us to be happy. I want us to be able to have the choice to be able to live the life we want to live. You know, if you're someone who wants to live in a village and herd cattle, then let that be your choice. If you're yeah. someone who wants to, you know, work hard and start your own business, look, whatever aspirations you have, I want every single Zimbabwean and every single a- uh, African to be able to realize whatever potential it is they have and whatever potential they want to see for themselves. And it shouldn't be hindered by nepotism. They shouldn't be hindered by corrupt politicians. They shouldn't be hindered by Western interference. We just want to be able to live a life that's fulfilling, that's happy, that's enjoyable, you know, um, and you can live your aspirations. And, 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 and what is very interesting, as you say, is that Zimbabweans are very resilient persons that um, operate under pressure over the years. So, so can you imagine in an atmosphere where there's that um, oiling mechanism that can make them flourish? You can see the greatness coming through there. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the thing, you know, when you look at what we've been through over the last several years, some of the strides people have, some of the measures people have taken, some of the achievements people have had, you know, in those years, some of the, the business people that have come out of Zimbabwe, um, you know, international renowned business people, it just shows you the potential there is in that country. Like, I think, um, what's his name? Uh, Boris gave a speech today in Parliament. And, you know, and this is the only time I think I'll agree with Boris, with Boris Johnson. Yes. <laughs> when he said um, Zimbabwe is the, is the jewel of Africa. You know, it just shows you what type of people they are, you know. Um, and, and I think that's the thing that's held Zimbabwe back from its progress. You know, whether it's, you know, ensuring that the southern part of the country, the Matabini land, wasn't developed, that's, 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 that's just mm-hmm. not necessary. We we're all one people in one country. That wasn't necessary for that to happen. You know, whether it's denying um, youth opportunities and employment, that's something which is not necessary. You know, so mm-hmm. it's just trying to get rid of all these things that have happened which are not necessary and people being able to move on um, and develop the country and their lives. You know, someone someone said this, and uh, I'm not going to keep it too longer. Um, uh, someone said, where are the strong African leaders to negotiate with Western looters, individual companies who are continuously taking the natural resources out of Africa for the best terms of yeah. Africa and its citizens? Because we're still seeing the rape of Africa, in a, in a yeah. sense. We, we, the, the rape of Africa with the natural resources which were the people, 
many years ago, um, the, yeah. the continent. And what we are still seeing still is the rape of Africa in a sort of political, diplomatic way. But people are seeing this happening. Um, to me. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know, and do you know why that won't change? Tell me why. That won't change because the same thing that led us into, into slavery, the same thing that led us into colonialization is the same tactic which these, um, these, uh, these, these, these foreign companies and these foreign governments are still using today. And it's that divide and conquer, you know, is that, well, you know, you're, you're a particular African country, so you should look after your own interests. Until the African leaders themselves can sit down and work things out within themselves, yeah. we'll never see any of that changing. Until the African countries themselves can, and this was one of the things that Gaddafi said, you know, for all the things, despite being vilified, you know, he was someone who was calling for a united African currency. You know, no borders across Africa. You know, more leaders working together and so forth. And that's one of the reasons why people suggest that maybe Libya got invaded because, you know, he was pushing for it and he was pushing to fund all these changes across the different African governments because he had the money to do so. But until our leaders can sit down amongst themselves and have constructive debate and start trading more within each other and supporting each other, and actually so show that we're we a united people, you know, we're a block. Nothing will change. Right. And, and one final point, the African Union. Yeah. That's where we need to see the change, really. Mm. The African Union has got a, it's a, it's in a very powerful organization um, to facilitate change. It's in a very powerful position to facilitate change across Africa, you know, and which is why it got rebranded to become the, the African Union. You know, and that was the deep dream of Kwame Nkrumah. Because do you know that actually it was Kwame Nkrumah who came up with this idea of a, a block of economic powers, which was yeah. then translated into the European Union. You know, so these are concepts which came from Africa. But then when we tried to implement them, you know, um, certain powers that be made sure that maybe these things didn't come into fruition in Africa because maybe they realized how strong it, it would make the, the, the economies, how strong it would make the people and so forth. Um, so, you know, gradually, hopefully over the next few years, the African Union becomes more and more powerful. And it's not just a barking dog with no teeth. Right, right. Okay, so, so I guess in wrapping up then, what we're seeing is, uh, even though it's an unfortunate situation, which is unfolding, it could be a light at the end of the tunnel, and not an, and let's hope it is not an upcoming oncoming train. There's a there's a years ago in Jamaica, there's a former prime minister by the name of Edward Siaga, and you know they have all these different political yeah. cartoons going on, and in the cartoon they said there's light at the end of a tunnel, and they show the train going in the tunnel. But what was actually coming was, was another train. <laughs> you know, they all these Leandro, these you know, you know the arts of Michael Manley and, uh, and Edward Siava. Michael yeah. Manley were great in Jamaica there. Um, so uh, let's hope then that we are seeing, or what we're seeing is a light at the end of a tunnel. Tinashe. Definitely. And, and let's hope definitely, that there is a, a, a way forward, really. Yeah, no, thank you, thank you. And I think all Zimbabwe, despite everything that's going on, I think a lot of people feel that there is an air of change. You know, people were excited. People, we've been up all night. You know, people are breathing. You know, there's, strong, there's a strong sigh of relief. Like, oh, finally, there's some change. Even though it's still the same as on the PF, people are still feeling there's change, there's hope. So we hope yeah. that hope continues into the next few years um, and the next generations to come as well. And you know, and I wish I wish the best for um, I wish the best for uh, Mugabe. I, I I wish the best that mm. everything works out well, and um, he will move aside, and everything will go gracefully, and that he will somewhat um, write those memoirs of the era, you know, the last relic of African leadership. Yeah, but the last relic in that era, that period, because 
what we're going to be having yeah. now is a new rise, the rise of the Tinashe, you know, the rise of all the different <laughs> Africans who are rising up. Myself, we're all, you see, what is happening now, Tinashe? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe what is happening now is um, there's an awakening. <clears throat> there's an awakening for black people worldwide. You see, what is happening in America? Mm -hmm. um, what is happening in uh, the UK? What is happening in Jamaica? What is, there's a, a wave of awakening. But we can miss the boat. We can miss the boat because yeah. we've we got the sign. And, and that's one of the reasons yeah. why yeah. tonight we have, we've just met today. I just get on and do things and try to empower, to create these things because we've got to move away from the, uh, the superficial and deal with fundamental yeah. deep issues. I, I, I strongly believe in the whole aspect of politics, the whole aspect of us being involved in politics, be at the table. It makes no sense that we mm. talk about we want change, but we are not being there to effect that change, whether in the UK, whether in yeah. Africa. And, and, and I say to people, oh, well, we can't all go back to Africa now, because guess what? A lot of us are here, so we also need the leadership here. We're in the UK, in the USA, or whatever like that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that is true. That is very true. That is very true. But I think you are right. There are definitely exciting times, and I think we've learned from the the, the lessons because you know when you look back at the history of the, the <laughs> Pan African Tinashe for president, Tinashe for president. I just saw that Tinashe <laughs> for president. <laughs> when you look back at the the Pan African movement itself. Um, you actually realize this, this, the strong ties that the Pan-African movement had with um, our, our African brothers in America, our African brothers and sisters in America, Afri African brothers and sisters in the Caribbean, and in Africa itself. And this is going back to the 1800s and the 1900s. And then at some point, that connection got cut. You know, so it's interesting to see that there's now a resurrection of that movement, you know, which is being brought about uh, by, you know, the Marcus Garvey's, the W. Du Bois and so forth, the Kwame Nkrumah's, uh, which got cut at some point. And, just, you know, like you said, now's the time we can miss the boat. Hopefully we don't miss the boat and yes. we can jump on this boat and, you know, see, see something grow um, and yes. see a, a bright future for us. And hopefully it's not a train heading towards us. <laughs> and, and I'll wrap up with this comment, what this uh, lady said from one of my uh, forum sites, Facilities for Better Jamaica. Great discussion. I do believe that black people and countries will connect the big puzzle and become entwined, intertwined as a great people. She said, as a great people. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and that is correct, as yeah. a great people. But that's what we are, really. And that is why, yeah. as a Jamaican, to a Zimbabwean, and, uh, and as we shared earlier today, the Bob Marley music as well, you know, as Bob Marley is yeah, part of the yeah, yeah. blood lineage as uh, families from the skills of nine months. Yeah, you told me. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so therefore, we've, we've got that connection. And, and I thank Ka Catherine for linking us today. And we spoke just once. Yeah. And that connection was just there. And ladies and gentlemen, I just met him. Yeah, 20 minutes before I started. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so listen, <clears throat> I want to thank you so much, Tanashi. Uh, sorry, I think you, want, you might want to say something further before we go, yeah. Yeah, no, I just want to say that they have a saying um, in, 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 in one of the languages spoken in Zimbabwe, in Shona, where they say that, um, which means that, you know, those people who have met before, um, whether it's in a past life or people who meet today, that we mm -hmm. meet again in the future. Um, and, you know, you always have a connection between you two, uh, between yourself. Mm -hmm. So I hope that for us as well, that, you know, um, it's been interesting to talk to you. Uh, for everyone else who's been listening as well, I hope it's been interesting for them. And for that connection between, you know, the Caribbean, the America, um, you know, in Britain, in Africa, I hope we see more connections like this happening. Um, because like you said, it's the only way we can go, you know, and I think you're very right there. Okay, that is that is awesome. So listen, we keep the link, and I think we may have to come back again because 
there's more development. <laughs> so might have to do might have to do a review in a couple of days. I mean, I think the the clocks are ticking and you know, a day in politics is yeah. crazy, you know. So listen, Tanasha, yeah. thank you so much for joining you. and uh and your people and we wish all the best for thank yourself you and uh, Zimbabwe. We're praying for you as well. All the best. Okay. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you for your prayers and thank you for your hard work as well. Yeah. And also check some of the comments back up. People are gonna be are talking about you so you can respond to some of the comments on the Facebook um, thread, the video which we are actually yeah. on. Yeah. There are a lot of comments there as well. Yeah. Okay, sir? Will do. Thank you. Okay, Peace. thank you. Have a good have a good night. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Peace and love. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Bye. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, you have heard Tanashe and uh, talk about um, Mugabe, and I believe it was a very interesting discussion. I hope you think so as well. Um, please share this video. Um, I've gone over my time actually. I try to keep it within an hour, and uh, but I believe it. It is. Uh, it's a. It's an. It's an interesting time for Africa. I believe, as I said earlier, I believe it's a uh, awakening. As Gwendolyn Turner said um, on my Facebook for facilitating so better Jamaica, um, she said that it is where the puzzles are being connected now, whereby uh, as a people we entwine. You know. Um, we, 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 we link, we entwine, and we build, and we structurize, and everything like that. And I believe that through any uh, negative or whatever, there's always some level of positive that comes through. You know. Anyhow, earlier I mentioned about this new age, the ID for, for Jamaica, where there's a lot of discussions and who are about it. That is a topic I want to pick up on, and I'm hoping to get a, a couple of guests from Jamaica at another time, a convenient time, uh, for and against it and just explore it because what I'm hearing is not good, but I, I do not have much information on it and I'm just reading up a bit uh, because sometimes when you talk about these things with Jamaica, when one political party or a government puts something on the opposition, when they take it on, which might be good or, or what, with good reasons, but sometimes it becomes politicized and sometimes we don't get to see exactly what it is about. So that is a topic I'm going to pick up on very soon and I look for your comment as well. And as you say, this is a Silver and Show, but this is my Facebook special, we I call it, uh, the late one with Silver, because I always do it at 10.30, 10 o'clock. One of the reasons was because we did a survey and persons from the US, Jamaica, who said this is the best time. And of course, those in the UK, like here, they be going to bed, but they feel that it's informative because I believe that we need to also get the, the news or different topics or different discussions from our perspective as well and I, and I believe that is what I'm aiming to do so if you like what you see or what we're doing um, I've got a team of persons so they just see me but you know trust me I couldn't do all of this by myself really but please let me know your views what are the topics because I'll touch on anything which is actually uh, relevant which is now but which is empowering so you're not going to hear me talking about Look at petty things sometimes, like woman and man, and all those sort of petty things. Really, not that, not that they are petty, but I, I want to deal with. You know, everybody can't deal with everything. I, I want to deal with uh, fundamental, deep, fundamental issues regarding governments. And I'm looking to see a generation change. I'm looking to see a generation empowered. I'm looking to make sure that my life is a life which empower people, and that uh, and 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 that each person has a voice. I would say this: each person has a voice. And the voice that we have, which is God-given by inspiration, it's to be used to help and to build persons, not for ourselves. Whatever we have, whatever gift we have, it is to give for others. We get the gift, we get the passion, we give it. We, it, it the more we keep it and, and block it in, is the more we, we lose it. It's like a talent. Don't hide the talents, but let it display. Let it be a display of your splendor. So that is my um, offer. To, to my people and um, to the world. And I always ask this question to many people over there. What is your word to the world? What is your word to the world? You know? Um, I just see Donna Bell's that crime is more important in Jamaica now. Um, so I think, Donna, you're talking about in respect of the whole ID thing. Um, Donna Bell said, not good. Um, Mike Wood said, Nash. Uh, comment um, saying very interesting topic, great message, William Mindu, or William Mindu. Um, so, so let me know, let me know, and and and, and please, this discussion on the uh, the, uh, the 
ID thing, because ID also is, I, I believe, without understanding a lot, a, a national ID sometimes has its positive and its plus and its negative. But I think they're talking about some blood samples and some DNA, which is what is actually making some people actually a bit concerned about this DNA issue. Um, because it seems like there's a trust factor, you know, when there's a trust factor, that is fundamental. Many people say people are from Jamaica are more happy to give their details to America when they go to the embassy, when they go to the UK embassy, they will give everything, but do not want to give those key information to the Jamaican government. The question is, why? Why don't we trust ourselves? Why don't we trust ourselves? Let's talk about in Africa, talk about us as a people. Why don't we trust ourselves? Why? Is it coming back from the slavery period? No trust. We sold ourselves out at the same time. Yes. All part of the bigger picture. Why don't we trust ourselves? That's a fundamental thing. Is this good or is it bad? Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is my talk for tonight. Um, tune in. And remember to subscribe to the Silver and Show, which is on YouTube at silverandtv.com. Uh, follow me on Instagram, Silver and TV. These are some crazy things I'm doing. You know, I'm always singing Keith Sweat <laughs> um, as well. Uh, and uh, you know, Twitter, Instagram as well. And definitely um, as much as possible. I, I, I think I just want to make sure that I do not leave any comments going because I, I think someone mentioned something about, I see what, what it is. The, the really reality talk, the ID is lacking credibility and clarity, okay? Lacking credibility and clarity, okay? So there are some fundamental issues there. Okay, well, I will be coming back online with this at another time. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, um, for this. And uh, Donna Bell, um, let's, uh, Donna Bell, let's see if we can talk offline, if anything, let's talk more about this. Um, so we can understand more about this whole thing. Um, you talk about the, the I think that the, the, the seems to be the whole issue about crime, which is in Jamaica. Okay, so the topic for tonight was great with uh, Mr. Tinashe Mendo, talking about is Mugabe the last relic of African leadership, following that whole topic regarding Mugabe and uh, and what's happening there. So let's keep the, the focus as much as possible. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Instagram, thank you so much for joining and have a good day at work tomorrow, wherever you do. And uh, peace out. God bless you. And I always remember this. I always leave with this. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And may his face shine upon you. I may give you peace. Donna Bell, PM me, message me, whatever. Let's take it there. Tanashe, thank you so much. Catherine, thank you so much. My Zimbabwean family, thank you so much, very much. Let's all connect in time. Bless you. Peace.